A couple of things prompted me to leave England. I had a health scare. There was a doctor found a lump in my breast and, and I had to wait a week to find out if it was cancer or not. And in that week I made a list of all the things that I would do if it wasn't cancer. And the number one thing was move to California because I'd always wanted to just try it. And so I booked a one-way ticket as soon as I got the all clear and uh, never looked back. Thank God I did. Everyone told me not to. Everyone said I was too old. I was 28. Everyone said I was too fat. I was a size six to eight. And everyone said I was too ethnic and they can f off. <laughs> I'm Jamila Jamil and today I'm unfiltered. If I could describe myself in a few words, I'd say brave, uh, ridiculous and authentic. The first time I recognized beauty was probably watching a Disney princess and thinking that beauty was long blonde hair and white skin and a waist that was that big. And I think that probably haunted me up until now. I think my first memory of makeup was in my 20s. That's when I really started to use it on myself. And I uh, was very bad at it and I used to wear it so thick like war paint, uh, almost as though that was my armor going out into the world. And so you could never really see my skin and it couldn't breathe. And it wasn't really until I started dating the man that I'm currently with that I stopped wearing makeup outside and started to just generally wear less because he uh, preferred my face first thing in the morning and made me feel comfortable in my skin. I have no sense of how you're supposed to do this carefully. I just scrub it off with a wipe. I can't be bothered with all the stuff that you're supposed to do. It's fine, I think it's all a scam. Growing up in London was interesting. It was a racist time in London, so it was hard to make friends when I was younger. I was also deaf until I was 12, so that was its own kind of alienating experience. It was, it was great in a way, because it made me a quiet person even though I don't seem that way on my Twitter, uh, but it also uh, made me a very observant person, which I think has kept me very safe in this industry. I didn't ever have a sense of belonging until I was in my 20s. I was just, I always felt different. I was always uh, treated badly for being different. And uh, I was very academic and I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do drugs, I wasn't cool. I think the greatest thing was growing up and learning that your school is just four walls and there's a whole world out there beyond your school. So if you are someone who doesn't currently fit in, please remember if you just hang on, you'll be able to find your tribe on the outside. So to sum up my career very quickly, I uh, wanted to be a doctor because I am South Asian as fork. Uh, and then I was hit by a car into another car, broke my back, was in bed for about a year and a half, decided not to go back to school, so therefore couldn't be a doctor, became an English teacher instead, and then got scouted by a TV producer who asked me to go to the biggest audition in the country for a TV hosting job on Channel 4 in England. Somehow I got that job with no previous experience, and uh, a week later I was live on national television. And uh, a year after that, I got my own show, uh, a year after that, that, I started my own magazine column. A year after that, I started on BBC Radio. I'm here to deliver unto you all of the latest chart news and gossip in less time than it takes to make a cup of tea. And then at about 28, I became bored. I became tired. I felt like there weren't enough opportunities for women, especially not women of colour. So I came to America with a one-way ticket and I never left. It's been five years. My first audition here was The Good Place. I'd never acted before, but for some reason Mike Scher has uh, no sense um, and is a, a lunatic and gave me the job. And now I'm here. Hello. Can I just say, I love your house. It's just so tiny and cute. It's like a little child's plaything, like for a family of mice. I really like doing things that I, I uh, am afraid of and that I, you know, I, I, I think there's tremendous nobility in trying something that there isn't guaranteed success in. I think we live in a generation that only values success and winning and perfection and I'm not interested in that, I never have been. You know, as women, we're always told what we're capable of, which is not much. And that's why we're told that we have to be so beautiful because uh, we have no other value. And so I really like pushing against that and seeing what I can do, what I'm capable of outside of a man's dictation of my value. I love these wipes. Just, I love a wipe, and makeup artists are always horrified by me. Ugh, I think they're so pretentious. It's fine. I've been using wipes for 11 years, my skin's fine. Like, it's, it's a scam. 
I don't really watch myself on camera uh, because I have body dysmorphia, so I find it a real struggle. So I have to kind of peek through my fingers almost at the good place when I'm watching it. But uh, generally, it's just exciting when I do see myself to see the people that I'm around mostly. I think those are the ones that I focus on where it's like, oh my God, I'm on screen with Ted Danson or with Maya Rudolph or with Jim Carrey. Uh, I think those are the things that are magical about being on TV here. Generally, just to be in this industry is such a privilege. So lucky to do something so fun and get paid for it. But there is also a dark side to this industry. It's so ironic that I'm now in the middle of an industry that messed me up so much when I was younger and made me feel so bad about myself. And so I think that's why I rally so hard to undo all the damage that was done to me and just try and like show all of the nonsense and the, the smoke and mirrors of it all and just tell all of the truth that no one else knows. That's why I don't allow Photoshop. It's why I uh, go makeup free all the time on my social media. I just want to make sure that we're transparent. I tell everyone all the tricks and tips and the lies uh, because I think that knowledge is power. Uh, I don't think anyone really disagrees with me when I you know, call famous people out. If you look under their posts, often their fans are already tagging me. The, the, that's often how I find out about it. I don't follow those people. I don't follow influencers and models and people who hawk diet and detox products because uh, I think those people suck. I've met a couple of them and they were polite over the years. I don't think they're bad people. I don't want them canceled. I just want them to stop selling diet and detox products to kids and then I will, you know, get off their dick. I was 19 and I just recovered from breaking my back in that car accident and realizing how much I'd taken my body for granted and how awfully I'd spoken to myself all of my teen years. I'd been very anorexic before. And I looked at why I hated myself so much and it was because of the fashion industry and movies and Hollywood in general, uh, in part, and just generally the culture of what women in the 90s were expected to look like. And so I decided I wanted to fight back and I started writing letters to newspapers and I became a model scout so that I could try and change the industry from the inside. I thought I was Jason Bourne. Um, I didn't manage to, <laughs> uh, but instead I moved on to Hollywood where I've now been able to actually make significant change. So I do think, unfortunately, you get listened to more from the inside than the outside and that's been a big part of my motivation to be in this industry. Acting is fun, uh, hosting is fun, celebrities are like, oh, they're okay. Um, but uh, the best part about this is being able to actually have an audience to change people's mind, to try and change a culture. And I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to do, to stop anyone from ending up as messed up as I was. I didn't get very much sleep last night. When it comes to sexuality and feminism, I'm all for whatever it is that you want to do. Something I would like to see more of, if I could if I could have it my way, is more equality in the nakedness. So rather than always having the woman naked and dancing and the man sitting on his ass doing nothing, uh, wearing outdoor winter layers, uh, I would like to see men up performing for us and pleasing us. I'd like to see some balls if I'm gonna see some boobs, frankly. I weigh as a mental health movement, it's not just about the way that you look, it's about the way that you feel. I get like a hundred messages a day from people telling me that I weigh has changed the way that they look at themselves and mothers saying they bought a bikini for the first time in 10 years or I've had girls stop me in supermarkets and tell me that they started to eat again because of me through their anorexia or people have stopped wearing so much makeup, people have stopped photoshopping themselves, people feel better about their Mental health, it's like I weigh as a mental health movement, it's not just about the way that you look, it's about the way that you feel. And we have been responsible just by telling people the truth. You know, we're not out here saving anyone. We're just telling people the truth. It's definitely the thing that I'm proudest of in my life and my career. We have a responsibility to be transparent when we have this much privilege, in my opinion. I'm not gonna look in the mirror because I hate looking in mirrors. So I just tend to stay away from reflective objects. I think sometimes this whole body positivity and self-love thing is, is just a lot for people to have to uh, achieve. It's a lot of pressure to have to love something that you hate or that society has taught you to hate and society act actively hates. It's the ideal, but sometimes it's hard just to go straight from hatred to love, so I prefer neutrality. That's where I'm at now. I can't love my body, but I can accept my body 
and just get on with it and not think about it and not worry about it as much. I think that the only problem I have with this kind of love your body movement is is that it's still forcing us to stay trapped in the obsession of our bodies. It still means that we're thinking about them. And as a gender, we're behind because we're being given all this extra homework to do. I think women in particular would, would have a lot to gain from thinking less about our bodies and more about our bank accounts and our social lives and our love lives and you know our families and our educations. I think that's where our priority should lie if we're gonna catch up with men. I thought that Thin white women, well, like Kate Moss, was my was my sort of ideal beauty when I was younger. But now that's changed, and now I love dark skin. I love big lips, and and I like a strong nose, which I used to hate when I was younger. I find all kinds of different body types gorgeous, and I uh, don't see stretch marks as a flaw anymore. I, I like I love mine to the point where I've got stretch marks all over my breasts, and whenever they would try and put makeup on them on the good place, I would make them take the makeup off because I think that that's a part of me that I'm not ashamed of, and by covering it. Up, it sends a really bad message. I don't really ever feel beautiful. I'm also not interested in feeling beautiful. I just like feeling like myself, which is normally when I'm lying in my boyfriend's arms. I'm not interested in, in beauty terribly. I, I like fashion and uh, makeup and I like playing with colours and I used to paint and so I think I, I find that quite fun. But I, yeah, I never really feel beautiful. I just, I prefer to feel funny or smart or um, happy. <laughs>